Dear friends, welcome to the final Wednesday Word of 2022 on Wednesday the 21st of December. We'll be having a break next week, so the next Wednesday Word will be on the 4th of January. I'm sorry to bring a sober note to our Christmas celebrations, but this year has been dominated by the horrific war in Ukraine. And yesterday marked the 300th day of the Russian invasion. A few days ago, I read the tragic story of the martyrdom of a 52-year-old Ukrainian pastor, Anatoly Propopchek, and his 19-year-old son, Alexander, who were seized by the Russian soldiers while they were working in their garage close to Kershon. Anatoly was a deacon and a, and a preacher at a Pentecostal church near Kershon. According to Release International, the Russian troops who arrested them said, your church has no right to exist as it has connections with America and other Western countries. Well, this is an accusation that was all too familiar in the days of the Soviet Union. For this crime, evangelical Christians were put in prisons and concentration camps. Many were tortured and killed. Well, a similar story is now unfolding in Ukraine, as President Putin is attempting to suppress all churches, apart from the Russian Orthodox Church, which is fully supportive of the war. Anatoly was described as having helped many people in practical ways, enthusiastically and sacrificially, regardless of whether they were members of his church. As the Bible says, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people. After they were found, the men's bodies bore signs of prolonged torture so that it was difficult to identify them. Anatoly leaves a widow, Irina, and five other children, four sons and a daughter. I read this tragic story on the same day that I came across this poem written by Malcolm Geit, which the King chose to include in his Together at Christmas carol service at Westminster Abbey last week. We think of him as safe beneath the steeple, or cosy in a crib beside the font. But he is with a million displaced people on the long road of weariness and want. For even as we sing our final carol, his family is up and on the road, fleeing the wrath of someone else's quarrel, glancing behind and shouldering their load. Whilst Herod rages still from his dark tower, Christ clings to Mary, fingers tightly curled, the lambs are slaughtered by the men of power and death squads spread their curse across the world. But every Herod dies and comes alone to stand before the Lamb upon the throne. As we celebrate Christmas this year, remember and pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and especially Irina and her five other children. God bless you today and may I wish you a very happy Christmas.